of Tanzania's largest city. An unassuming building preserves a special history. Every available surface covered in vibrantly colored paintings. This is the Tinga Tinga Arts Cooperative in Dar es Salaam. As we start to draw, we apply background paint. Then we put it in the sun to dry. Then we take a brush and start to draw. You will follow what I do. Abbas Rafiq has a new student. Lucas is here to learn a very unique style of painting that has come to define the art scene in Tanzania and across East Africa. The arts cooperative bears the name of Edward Said Tinga Tinga, widely regarded as one of the most famous artists in Tanzania's history. This area is called the uh, Morogoro Stores, uh, and it's, uh, it has a special signification for contemporary popular art in Tanzania, in the sense that this is where Tinga Tinga, Edward Said Tinga Tinga, started to bring his paintings. Yves Gossini is a Tinga Tinga historian and author. In 1968, he says Tinga Tinga began to paint with no prior training. Nothing at all. It was a spontaneous, uh, you know, self-taught. You can say self-taught in the sense that every single painting from the first one, he was just trying. Self-taught. He was teaching himself how to paint. Appealing to Tanzania's tourists, some of Tinga Tinga's favorite subjects to paint were animals. He used simple materials like masonite board and bicycle paint. The rich colors became his trademark, and Tanzania's folk art culture began to reach a new audience. Tinga Tinga did not start with more than one object. The original Tinga Tinga paintings had only one object, mainly an animal, a very abstract animal, abstract in the sense that uh, uh, he was not interested, maybe he was incapable of coping nature. Uh, stylized, almost abstract, this is what he wanted uh, his followers to do. At this cooperative, there are more than 60 artists making Tinga Tinga's style their own. There are several of these cooperatives around the city, inspiring generations of artists. But Tinga Tinga never saw the influence of his work. In 1972, just four years after he started painting, he was killed. This is uh, the place, Samora Avenue, where Eduardi Saidi Tinga Tinga was to meet his fatal fate. On that evening, as they were coming from Sasani village, after having a few drinks, and a friend who was using a car just say, OK, let's go to the city center. So this is where the city center starts, at this top clock tower, and this is the main avenue. The driver of the car wouldn't stop at a police checkpoint. So the officers began shooting at the vehicle. Tinga Tinga was hit several times in the back. When he passed away, of course, uh, there, there was a community, there was a community meeting because you know, we are in Africa and you don't die alone. The first students that uh, Tinga Tinga had formed rapidly because he started in 68 and he died in 72, it's only four years. So they agree that okay, they will continue to paint themselves in the spirit of Tinga Tinga. And they will also accept to have students learning from there. He started a single and gen genius, you know, artist. He formed five of them, and these five continued to form others, so the pyramid was getting broader and broader and broader. 
until it became like seven or so many hundreds of artists now painting in that style today. Lucas is now one of those students. What color shall we add after that? We shall add red, blue, different colors up to the end. Today's lesson is an elephant on a colorful background, an animal as the single subject, just like Tinga Tinga would have wanted it. How can you draw without looking at a picture? Because I have used this style for a long time, I know how to draw every kind of animal. They are all in my head. Even if I wake up from my sleep, I will know how to draw an elephant, a giraffe, any animal I want. Among the paintings, another woman is hard at work. Her name is Martina, and she is Tinga Tinga's daughter. I like this Tinga Tinga painting. This is a painting of a cheetah. This was the first drawing my father, Edward Saidi Tinga Tinga, ever did. Martina was only two years old when her father was killed. She's been painting now for five years as a way to carry on his legacy. I use my father's style of Tinga Tinga art I like my father's painting because my father is the pioneer, and I felt in my heart that I should follow in his line of art, and that is why I like to paint. I feel good that my father's name is well known all over the world. Across the city at the residence of the Swiss ambassador, a rare collection of original Tinga Tinga paintings. Another example of the reach and influence of an artist with a short career, but a lasting legacy. I think it's one of the best things that you can get from Tanzania, you see. And I'm not trying to convince you, but I mean, most of the people visiting Tanzania, they usually don't go out of Tanzania without at least one thing, a thing a painting, because they like it. I mean, way back in the hearts, you know, there might be adults and old people and everything, but it touches them somewhere. And I think the image of Tanzania, the best image you can take is a Tinga Tinga painting. Coming up, from vibrant paintings to prints, we explore the fabric of Tanzania.